Question A, determine the gradient of a line PQ. So we know that the gradient formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And so I'm just gonna use these two points now and go fill that in. So that would be two minus minus four over minus four minus minus two. Go ahead, work that out. And that'll give us minus three. Question B, determine the gradient of line PR if PQ is perpendicular to PR. We know that when two lines are perpendicular, then when you multiply their gradients together, so if you multiply the gradient of PQ or QP, multiplied by the gradient of PR, that should equal negative one. The reason is, is that PQ is perpendicular to PR. It means that it's 90 degrees. So we've just worked out the gradient of PQ as negative three, so we can say negative three over here. And then we can go work out the gradient of PR as negative one divided by negative three, and that's gonna give us one over three. Question C, determine the value of A. So A is this little X coordinate over here. So what we can do here is we can say that the gradient of PR We've already proven that that is a third. So we can then say a third is equal to um, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 using these coordinates over here. So that would be minus one minus minus four over a minus minus two. We can now simplify a bit, so one over three, and then on the right-hand side, you're gonna end up with minus one plus four, which is three, and then over here, you're gonna get a plus two. What I would do here is I would use cross multiplication, so the a plus two would go there, and the three would go there. And so you're gonna end up with a plus two on the top left, and nine on the top right, and if you had to go solve for a, you should get seven. Question D, calculate the area of triangle QPR. Now, triangle QPR, we can just use the area formula, which is a half base times height. And so the base and height would be this line and this line. It's always the two lines that make 90 degrees. It doesn't matter which one you choose as the base and which one you choose as the height. Um, but as long as you are choosing the two lines that are 90 degrees with each other. So what we need is we need to go calculate the lengths of the base and we need to go calculate the length of the height. And so we know that the distance formula, so let's say for PR, we know that the distance formula is x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So I'm gonna do that for PR, and so that's gonna give, we can use seven, because remember this x value here is seven, minus minus two squared, and then minus one minus minus four squared. Go ahead, type that on the calculator. Now, I wouldn't round off because this isn't our final answer, so I'm actually just gonna leave that as three square root 10 for now. I'm now gonna go calculate the length of PQ. So PQ, I'm gonna use this point first. It doesn't really matter, you can use different points first, but I'm gonna go minus four, minus minus two, plus two, minus minus four. And if you go work that out, you end up with two square root 10. Then I would use the area formula, which we have here. And so the area is gonna be a half, base multiplied by the height. And if you work that out, you end up with a nice answer of 30. Now we don't have to give any units because they haven't given us any units. If you really wanted to, you could say units um, or square units, square units, but they're not gonna be so strict about that if they haven't given you any units. Question E, determine the coordinates of the midpoint of QR. So the midpoint of this line over here. 
So of course we will use the midpoint formula, which is x1 plus x2 divided by two. And then we do the same with the y values. And we must remember that, okay, we have got that as seven already. So we could then say minus four plus seven over two. And then we could use two minus one over, well, technically I should have said two plus minus one over two. And if we go work this out, we are gonna get 1.5 and 0 0.5. And so that would be our coordinates for M. So we must just remember that. It's 1.5 and 0 0.5. Question F. Determine the equation of the line MN, which is passing through M and parallel to PR. Right, so because it's parallel to PR, it would be a line that would go something like this. See that? So it's parallel to PR and it's passing through, it's passing through M like that. So we know that it's a straight line. So we can say Y is equal to MX plus C. Now remember that when two lines are parallel, they have the same gradient. So the gradient of MN would be the same as the gradient of PR because they are parallel. So the gradient of MN, sorry, that should be capital, is gonna be a third. Remember, we worked out a third earlier. So we can then say Y is equal to a third X plus C. And then to find C, we would have to plug in any point on this line. Now, of course, the point we could use would be the point M, which is 1.5 and 0 0.5. So the 0 0.5 is the Y, and the 1.5 is the um, X value. And there we go. Now we can say 0 0.5 is equal to 0 0.5. And so C is actually zero. And so the equation is gonna be Y equals to a third x. Now that sort of makes sense because if you draw this accurately, you can see that this blue line over here is most likely gonna go through the origin. So it's gonna have a y-intercept of zero. So let's just fill that in. Y equals to a third x. And the last question for this entire question is find the size of angle q. Ah, okay. So typically in grade 11 analytical geometry, when we have to find angles like this, it's usually going to be inclination angles and things like that. So this one's going to be a relatively straightforward approach. What we could do is we could take this line over here and we could work out its gradient. Because if we have its gradient, then we can work out this little angle here, this um, tiny little angle over there. So to work out the gradient of that line, we just use the gradient formula. And you can choose however you wanna do this, but I'm gonna say uh, two minus minus one over minus four minus seven. And working that out, we get negative three over 11. So we could now work out the, we could work out this angle of inclination if you wanted to. Well, not if you wanted to, we sort of had to, have to. So when we work out angle of inclination, you always say um, tan or shift tan of the, not the negative, just the positive, like that. And that's gonna give you 15 comma 255. But now technically that angle, um, that angle would be this one over here. Now, unfortunately, we don't really have a name for this angle, so that's a bit difficult. So you can't explain that part to the teacher, so you'll just leave it as it is. So we know that this little piece here is 15,255. See, I haven't rounded off to the two decimal places yet because it's not the final answer. Then we could do the same type of approach with this line over here because that would allow us to work out this angle. So we could say that the gradient is gonna be equal to, so and now this is, let's just say, sorry, this is the gradient of QP. We should have showed the teacher that the gradient here was for QR. Now we're doing for QP. And so that's gonna be two minus, oh no, we already worked this one out. Hey guys, remember that? We already know that this one is minus three. So we can say gradient of PQ is minus three. Now don't use the minus three, you just use positive three. So you say shift tan of three, and that's gonna give you 
71,565. But if you look at the angle, um, that 71 is less than 90, so that's this one over here. So if you wanted theta, you would say 180 minus that one, and that's just because of angles on straight line. And so theta would be 108.435 degrees. So we haven't, uh, so now, okay, so um, in this triangle here, we now have this angle, this angle, and then of course we can use sum of angles in a triangle to find Q. And so angle Q is gonna be 180 minus 15,255 minus 108.435, and that the reason for that is sum angles in a triangle, and that's gonna give 56, 0.31 degrees. You might have done this in a different way. You could have used like exterior angles and things like that. As long as you're getting to the same answer, it's probably good.